Hi, I'm Sarah Wing of Sarah Wing Intuitive Arts, and today I will be talking about expressing intuition to others. So, expressing intuition to others. I'll be looking at two different ways to try this, and if either of them sparks your interest or touches your heart, I hope that you'll give one of them a try today. So first I want to talk about what happens when you follow your own intuition. So what happens? Well, you are building self-trust, which is a beautiful thing. You are cultivating self-respect, which is wonderful. You're listening to your feelings and you're making them a non-negotiable priority. When you listen to your instincts and follow them, you feel safe with yourself and safe with how you treat your body. And these are all really great muscles to flex. So, why express your intuition to others? And what exactly does that mean? Just to clarify here, I'm talking about expressing and respecting your own intuition. I will not be talking about offering up unsolicited advice to others. That is a different conversation to have, and I want to have a more heart-centered conversation. So, like I said, I'll be asking you to explore two ideas with me, two ways in which you can express your intuition with others. I'm an intuitive artist, in part meaning I have no idea what's going to show up on my canvas each time I sit down to paint. I paint in what I call chapters. After I sit and work on a piece, I will take a photo to share online and write a few sentences about what I see. I share the story I see in the painting. I do this after each time I sit and work on a piece. Whatever shows up, and it can be very, very different, <laughs> From one sitting to the next, it's part of the story. And I encourage other people, like yourself, <laughs> whether they see my art in person or images posted online, to share what they see. Because just as no two people walk into the same room, meaning we all enter from different life perspectives. No two people see the same painting or work of art. I want to know what story another person sees. First, I find this very interesting. <laughs> and you know, it's always felt very natural for me to walk around a gallery or a museum and tell the stories that I see in art and ask other people what stories they see. It's a passion that has never left me. So as a painter, I have that same curiosity. I'll work on a painting, stop, write the story of what I see at that point on the canvas. I'll post an image online and ask, what story do you see? Not purely just to satiate myself, I want to provide a safe space for intuitive expression. I want to provide the clear message that there are no wrong answers. No wrong answers. I want you to imagine that there is a photograph of a dog. Someone asks, what is that? The other person says, a dog. There is this universal agreement that dog is the correct answer. Now imagine a more abstract image. The same person asks, what is that? Here. The same person asks, what is that? They're still looking for a correct response. The person being asked may feel hesitation, anxiety, or even fear about how to respond. 
And these same feelings may be present in the person that's asking. Maybe neither can share their own response of how they feel, think, see, or sense about it. Maybe one is waiting for the other to say what they think. I'm not saying you always need to share your intuition, but sharing it when you want to feels great and it's validating. Have you ever wanted to share your intuition, but you kept stopping yourself from speaking it? It's like that trick that a clown does with the scarves. <laughs> You're kind of regurgitating these words instead of speaking your truth. Sometimes conversations can look like that. You could be at a table full of people just pulling scarves. This can only get you so far. So what could happen if you took a risk? If a risk was taken? And I just want to mention again that there are no wrong answers in what your intuition is telling you. Furthermore, there is room for everyone's answers. That feeling that we can get of there's only room enough for everyone else's opinion, but not mine. No. There's room for it, and it's necessary for the world. Why? Because you are in the world. There's room for you. <laughs> so going back to art as an example, there's an abstract image. There's tons of abstract images behind me. There's an abstract image. Someone asks, what is that? And you respond, I see a nest, or I see a cactus. I see a face. It feels sad. It makes me think of my mom. It kind of reminds me of my friend's couch. Ooh. I like that blue. It's like the ocean. I see a um, cave or maybe a really tall man. The person who asked may or may not see your answer, your intuitive story, your experience, but they might. Or they might see something that you would have never seen, but because they share their story, now you do. Allowing yourself to give the gift of vulnerability to another person is very rewarding. And sharing what you see in something that does not begin with a universal answer, like in the example of the photo of a dog, this allows the conversation to start with a blank slate of sorts. So, looking around at these paintings with all the colors and shapes, just go, paintings here. Okay, looking around. Think about each painting as a topic of conversation in your everyday life. I also paint larger pieces and there will be 50 to 100 colors expressing their stories within that larger conversation. Imagine an everyday universal conversation. Try to imagine it as a huge canvas with hundreds of colors and shapes. Whatever the universal conversation is on this giant canvas, can you only see one story? Is there room for only one story? No. You would see so many stories and you would see your own. <laughs> Set back down there. Art is universal. Art is inclusive. Art can be healing. Art can facilitate growth. 
You do not need to create it to share your experience of it. And your experience is correct. And if it changes, then it's still correct. Which brings me to something else that is universal, inclusive, healing, and facilitates growth through intuitive expression. At, and that is dream work. A beautiful man by the name of Reverend Jeremy Taylor, who crossed into spirit last year, taught dream work for over 40 years. He taught me that there is no such thing as a dream with only one meaning, that all dream and dream, dream images are overdetermined and have multiple meanings and layers of significance, that dreams break new ground and invite you to new understandings and insights. Doing dream work in a group, there were some basic rules. Um, I really appreciated how respectful and wise that they were. I'm not gonna run through all of them right now, but I do wanna highlight one. After a dream is shared, let's see, shared a dream, okay. It's only a dream. <laughs> there is an opportunity for others in the group to share what came to mind when they listened to the dream. The rule is you must speak in the first person. You'd start by saying, in my imagined version of the dream. Because only the dreamer knows what is true for them, just like the person commenting or anyone else listening and imagining the dream. I recently had a dream that involved a scorpion. Just that one symbol could represent so many universal, universal or personal things, like ancient Egypt, popular fables and myths, certain qualities associated with the scorpion, astronomy, astrology, references in music and television, sports teams, any personal experiences that involved a scorpion or its likeness. And what I see happen every time that I've done dream work is people sharing what they imagine, all the people, and other people getting moments of, aha, every experience is personal and very often universal. So, say you're listening to someone share their dream. You can only see what you imagine. If you look at an intuitive painting, you can only see what you imagine. And when you share your imagined version of the dream or the painting, you are sharing your personal story, some of which others may also imagine in the same or similar way, or it connects in that magical aha way. For example, the scorpion that was in my dream, one person shared that for them, it represented the lesson in the fable of the scorpion and the toad. And that gave me an aha. Or someone looked at a painting of mine and shared what they saw, and they mentioned seeing a sword in the stone. And just like that, wow, I saw it. Dreams, like art, speak a universal language. Jeremy Taylor said that all dreams come in service of health and wholeness. I believe that expressing your intuition serves that same purpose. Expressing intuition through art or dream work provides an opportunity to learn something new about yourself. Share unexpected and magical connections build relationships, build bridges in a gentle, peaceful, creative, and powerful way, build and increase intimacy, and strengthen bonds with friends, family, 
partners, and community. I love dream work and I love intuitive painting for many reasons. One thing that I feel it does is it confronts you with the question, what does this mean to me? And this is such a great question. <laughs> and it's one that never goes away. And the answer to that question changes with the topic or evolves and changes over time. And it's an intuitive question. And we don't always know where the answers come from. Why that answer? We intuitively paint our lives and once in a while, an image appears, pops out at us and makes itself known. And we have a sense of understanding. We each have a deeply rich inherent value. And that exists not just when we're awake. Every day we sleep, we dream, and what we dream about comes to us when it does to let us know that we are capable of addressing whatever is subconsciously surfacing. Even what I used to call nightmares, which I don't any longer because I believe all dreams come in service of health and wholeness. But even these bad dreams, or when you keep having the same bad dream or the same symbol keeps appearing over and over, scaring you awake. Next time you have a bad dream, just think of your spirit, your angels, your guides shouting, you've got this. I believe in you. You are capable of addressing this issue in your waking life. about that. Um, no, I'm telling you, uh, when <laughs> that scorpion in my dream woke me up, it scared the crap out of me. <laughs> and physically, it made me sick to my stomach. So you better believe I wanted to know why. I wanted to start using my intuition and asking others to share theirs. I wanted to paint the bigger picture. I do hope that if your heart embraced any of these ideas, that you'll try them in the future. And there will be opportunities every day. Use one to take a risk. I say risk because expressing how you see something purely as a validation of your own intuition can feel scary. But expressing your intuition with art or dream work, these are lower risk scenarios. But one day you'll have a bigger conversation. One that challenges you and you ask yourself if you can risk expressing your intuition to someone rather than shutting down or lashing out. Can you look at that conversation as a painting created by you both? One where the story you see, the other may not. That's okay. Imagine conversing about what you want to have in your future. That can feel like a risky conversation to have with someone. You know the expression, live your dreams? Well, we are living our dreams. <laughs> and sharing dreams helps you identify what is important to you. What symbols represent the dreams you want to live in your waking life. Expressing what you see in an intuitive painting or dream may sound simple or silly, but I personally see how it connects to building courage confidence, and clarity. He agrees. All through peaceful means. So, 
I hope this got uh, got your mind and heart stirring a bit. And um, yeah, there's an opportunity every day. So take a risk. It's worth it. You're worth it. All right. Until next time. Thank you so much. Thank you.